In this video, let's talk about something that we have in Node.js called unhandled rejections and then learn how we can actually handle them. So at this point, we have successfully handled errors in our express application by passing operational asynchronous errors down into a global error handling middleware. This then sends relevant error messages back to the client depending on the type of error that occurred, right? However, there might also occur errors outside of Express. And a good example for that in our current application is the MongoDB database connection. So imagine that the database is down for some reason or for some reason we cannot log in. And in that case, there are errors that we have to handle as well, but they didn't occur inside of our Express application. And so of course, our error handler that we implemented will not catch these errors, right? And so just to test what happens, let's go ahead and change our MongoDB password, okay? Because that way we're not gonna be able to connect to the database, right? And so we should then get some kind of error. And so let's go here to our server file and uh, save it in order to reload our server. Let's increase it here. And indeed, here we have an unhandled promise rejection. And so that is actually the topic of this video. So an unhandled promise rejection means that somewhere in our code, there is a promise that got rejected, but that rejection has not been handled anywhere. All right. And down here, you also see a deprecation warning, which says that in the future, unhandled rejections will simply exit the node program that's running, which might not always be what you want. Okay. So let's fix this problem and get rid of this unhandled promise rejection. Now in this simple example here, it would be actually quite easy to handle that rejection, right? All we'd have to do would to come here to this piece of code where our connection is actually done and then add a catch handler there, right? So a bit like this. And then in here, we could handle that rejection and would then no longer get this error. So let me just quickly show that to you. So try it again. And so now you get error, which is uh, of course the result of this log here. But of course we get no unhandled promise rejection again, because we actually handled it here. All right. So this would work of course, but I really want to show you how to globally handle unhandled rejected promises because in a bigger application, it can become a bit more difficult to always keep track of all the promises that might become rejected at some point. Okay. And so at some point you might have some unhandled promise rejection somewhere. And so let me show you how to deal with that globally, basically. And so let's now learn how to handle unhandled rejections. And we're going to do that right here. And uh, so remember how in one of the first sections of the course, we talked about events and event listeners, right? And so now it's time to actually use that knowledge. So each time that there is an unhandled rejection somewhere in our application, the process object will emit an object called unhandled rejection. And so we can subscribe to that event just like this. So process dot on, remember, and then the name of the event, unhandled rejection. And then the callback function here uh, receives an error. And so let's actually go ahead uh, and lock the error uh, to the console. So let's uh, use error.name and error.message. So these are kind of some defaults that we have on all errors in Node.js. All right. Okay. And after saving, we already down here get the name of the error and also the error message. So bad authentication which is because of course we have the wrong password. And so right now the unhandled promise rejection is now actually handled. And of course, not just the one from this failed connection, but any other promise rejection that we might not catch somewhere in the application is handled here in this final, uh, let's call it safety net, all right? So we always have to assume that we as programmers are gonna make errors. And so it's always best to have a central place like this to handle all promise rejections like a last safety net, all right? 
Now, if you really have like some problem with the database connection, like we have in this example, then our application is not gonna work at all. And so all we can really do here is to shut down our application, all right? So to shut down the application, we use process.exit. And we actually already used that before in that script where we imported all the data into uh, the database from the JSON file, remember? So process.exit, and then in here, we can actually pass uh, a code. And the code zero stands for success, and one stands for uncaught exception. And so that's the one that's uh, usually used here. All right, so usually you will uh, always see it like this. And let's just add uh, like a, a log here. So console.log, unhandle the rejection, nothing like this. <laughs> so you see, I, I really like this, this one here. And just letting the user know, or not really the user, but our log that we're shutting down, all right? And so now you see that the app actually crashed. And so that's because of this process.exit here, all right? Now there's just one problem with the way we implemented it right now, and that is that uh, the way we implement it here, so just process.exit, is a very abrupt way of ending the program because this will just immediately abort all the requests that are currently still running or pending. And so that might not be a good idea, okay? And so usually what we do is to shut down gracefully, where we first close the server and only then we shut down the application, okay? So let's, before we do that, we need to uh, save the server here basically to a variable, okay? And so the result of calling app.listen is a server. And so now on that server, we can then say server.close, which will, as the name says, close the server. And then after that's done, it will uh, run this callback function that we passed into it. And so it's only here where we then shut down the server. Okay. And so by doing this, by doing server.close, we give the server basically time to finish all the requests that are still pending or being handled at the time. And only after that, the server is then basically killed. All right. So when we give it a save, it's now gonna look exactly the same because yeah, we're like the, uh, the only ones uh, really accessing this application. But in the real world scenario, we should always do it like this, okay? And of course, it's not really ideal that the application crashed, right? Because right now, of course, the app is not running. It's not working at all, right? And so usually uh, in a production app on a web server, we will usually have some tool in place that restarts the application right after it crashes. Or also some of the platforms that host Node.js will automatically do that on their own, okay? Because of course, we don't wanna leave the application hanging like this forever. So that's not useful either, all right? And so basically, this is how you handle unhandled rejected promises. So again, basically we are listening to this unhandled rejection event, which then allows us to handle all the errors that occur in asynchronous code, which were not previously handled. But now you might ask, what about the synchronous code? Where are we gonna handle that? And the answer to that lies, as you can imagine, in the next video.